let's turn the clock back to the 70s. Saturday morning cartoons were a big deal, and Space Ghost was one of those. This figure is by request from one of the viewers. There are many interpretations of the character. I can only choose one. I won't make things too difficult as I don't like long videos, so I'll keep this short and to the point. This is our base body, and yes, I did have to take it apart to be able to primer this and paint it. Now, as far as paint, and I do put it in my descriptions in every video, but people still ask, and I will show you, this is what I'm using. Vallejo Premium Paints, a multi-surface paint that works really well on these different kinds of plastics that these companies are using. In this particular case, McFarland. And yes, I did use an airbrush. These are water soluble, incredibly easy to work with. Now, because it is a white paint I'm using, you do need a white primer. And I use the Tamiya Primer L, which is a great base for plastics and metal. It's expensive, it's about 14 bucks a bottle, but it does the trick for white paint. So to keep things simple, I did take this figure apart and I did primer it already with the Tamiya. Now, if you want to see how to do that, I have several other videos that you can actually look at to learn how to do that. Now, bypassing all of that information and going straight to this, I did plug in those holes for the pegs or the pegs themselves. I erased them by plugging them in. It does nothing for the stability of the figure. It's only cosmetic. But because there are wrinkles in the fabric, it makes it really easy to hide it and to mold it along with those fabric lines. And I did that to the arms as well as the legs. It makes it so much easier. And yes, I did not fill in the bat wedgie, which is now is the Space Ghost wedgie. Now, I did remove the belt and had to sand it down. Here is what you want to look at. If you leave it stark white and I've already painted white here it's just going to wash out either on film or camera etc it doesn't matter how you light it it's just going to wash out so you've got to give it some depth and dimension if you use black or gray it's just going to look dirty but if you use blue on a very light tone you get natural shading <laughs>
Now this is the belt buckle for the actual figure. And it is a piece of brass. It comes in a kit. A small, well, actually two sample pieces that I picked up at Lowe's in their hobby section. And I did paint it with the Tamiya X27, which is a translucent red. And you really have to have a clean area to work in. As you can tell, I got a piece of lint that fell into the work there and I had to respray it. Airbrushing is the best way to do it because it gives you an, an even coat. You can see a slight texture here because it's still drying. Once it's fully dry, it dries high gloss, very even finish. If you do it with a brush, this is what you're gonna end up with. It's gonna be lumpy, uneven, and if you don't have a clean area, it's gonna pick up everything. And if it's not fully dry, even your fingerprints. That's why I had to redo it. So let's talk about this cape. It's a little more involved than some of the other ones, but I'll skip right to the point and show you the details as a lot of the other steps are very, well, they're very similar to the other capes that I've made and you can watch some of those videos. Now this cape has a single wire that goes all the way around the edge. And although it is in a Superman style cut, it's still a little more involved because it involves, well, putting that wire in on the inside. And this time I did not have those pockets on the inside as it was gonna be difficult to add a wire at the bottom. Let me show you what I'm speaking about. So using a spare piece of material, you can then choose the open end and sew those or the folded end as I'm doing here. Bringing it to your sewing machine, get it as close to the edge where the needle is and make a very, very small seam. And this is what you're then gonna run all the way through to then bring the wire in and butt it up against. But we're not done yet. So let's first put in our seam. And this is our initial seam all the way down to the end of the fabric. And this will give you some good practice. <laughs> This is what your finished product should look like, or in this case, your practice product. And practice on different materials. Each one is going to react different to this technique. And it's easier on this case because it's cotton. Now we're not done yet, we're going to press it because pressing it is gonna help us create the seam that we need to put in that wire. So you fold over one half, fold it inside out, fold over one edge, press it down, then fold over the other edge against the edge you just pressed to give it a nice flat and clean look. And if you've got a steam iron, it's gonna work that much easier. So take your time, make sure you get this right because you wanna do it right on the last piece, which is your final product. So testing it out on different materials is gonna let you know what's gonna work best or easiest to work with. So let's go back to the sewing machine now that it's fully pressed and ready to go. Let's cut off any threads that could tangle into the work that we're gonna be practicing with. Now, once you cut those off, you're gonna take your piece of wire and I've already pre-cut a piece for myself. Mine comes in a coil or a spool. You're gonna to have to straighten it out if it's not straightened out. And you're gonna embed it on the inside where that fold is. And as you can tell, we do have a border or edge to set it up against. Now it's not gonna stay there by just putting it in there, especially if you had to straighten it out. So you're gonna to have to clip it. And I use just standard little wooden uh, clothes pins. So you can use alligator clips, whatever you want. If you wanna use tape, it's really not gonna work. It's gotta be clips, something that's gonna hold the wire against the material. And you wanna keep it as close to the edge as possible. Now these clips are really handy and you'll have to remove them as you get closer to the needle. So at the top, you're gonna to have to hold your threads, keep them away from the work so they don't create that bird nest underneath and then Get the needle close to the edge of that wire. Do not pinch the wire, you can break the needle. This is why you need to practice 
on a scrap piece of material. So create a small seam next to that wire and your forefinger should be able to feel that wire against the material. If in case it moves out of the way, open it up and push it back into place. Just work an inch at a time. If it's more than an inch that stays in place, then you can continue working. Go very slow because it is tricky and you don't want to break that needle. And this is why you want to practice on a scrap piece of material because you could actually mess it up on the final product. By practicing on scraps like this, you will then gain a little more confidence in yourself and of course learn how your machine works. Now I don't have the proper foot for this actual technique, but the presser foot is a slightly different, it's actually half of this. I'm using what I've got. So let's work with it. Now once you've gone through to the edge, make sure you backstitch to hold in those stitches. And if you've done it correctly, you should have nice even stitching along the edge. And you'll have a very, very nice, well, it's a little pocket for that wire. If you've done this correctly, you should be able to fold it in any direction without the wire falling out. And now you know that you're ready to take on the actual cape. Keep in mind that each fabric does have a different characteristic. Some are more easy to work with that than others. In this case, the cotton, it pleats easy, folds easy, and you can actually create more things with it in the sense that it is more uh, malleable to work with. But other fabrics are a little more finicky. Now the presser foot for this technique is not the correct one, but I'm using what I've got. So we have reached the end of this video and I hope that you learned something today that is essential to your customizing on the figures. And of course, if you remember Space Ghost in the 70s or the 80s or the late 90s, Space Ghost Coast to Coast, let me know your comments and your thoughts and well, some of those memories that this figure brings back to you. In any case, take a look at the shading on the white. If I'd have left this just stark white, I could easily lose the details with the lighting and I've got to darken the image just for you to see the white. But because there is a slight tinge of blue, which is the color that white takes on in shaded areas, it gives it more dimension. If I had used black or grays, he'd have just looked dirty and dingy. But those blues are the color that white takes on when it's in shaded or subdued lit areas. And then the actual lighting enhances it by casting shadow over those blue areas, creating a three-dimensional figure. Thank you very much for watching. Let's end it with some retro vibes. Mm -hmm.